there's one wonderful thing about our calendar and about the way we have everything lined up with our calendar because it makes us extremely in touch with time, with time passing, with the world. We are always aware of season and world and when it's Rosh Chodesh. And it's because we are, as our calendars, the way we live, and we listen, we sit in shul, and we listen. Ah, it's the Haftarah of Rosh Chodesh. And so one of the things about Bar Hashem being part of Am Yisrael is that we really, it makes us very aware of the world around us. If this particular Shabbat of Parshat Mishpatim would be a normal Shabbat, and it wouldn't be Rosh Chodesh, if Rosh Chodesh would have fallen during the week or what have you, then we would read Perak Lamed Dalid in Yirmiyahu, which is a very, very interesting historical <coughs> time. It is shortly before the Beit HaMikdash was actually destroyed. It's a little, it takes place in a little window of time uh, that um, took place between the time that there was a heavy siege set on Yerushalayim by Nebuchadnezzar, and then for a little while, uh, probably because he got uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, the uh, emperor of Babel, probably got some money, and so he took his army away for a little while. In that time, the people of Yehuda were asked by the king Sitkiah, who was the last king of uh, Yehuda. Uh, they were asked, actually they were commanded, it was a king's decree, to um, rid themselves of their <coughs> Jewish slaves. Because many of them had held on to their Jewish slaves and I'm deliberately <coughs> using the term slave for more than six years, and we know that the first halacha that we learn in Parshat Mishpatim is ki yishmeh, ki if you buy a Jewish servant. So it happens because it has so much history, it's very, very interesting. There's that history of the end uh, of the time of Yehuda, uh, the king, uh, uh, the king Zidki Yahu, the last king of Yehuda, and of course the interaction with the Nabi <coughs> Yirmiyahu himself. And then one unusual thing about that Haftorah is that when Chazal didn't want to, and remember last week if you were here, we talked about the fact that Chazal always wanted to end a Haftorah on a positive note, <coughs> and so sometimes they go forward. Usually they go forward. In this uh, Haftar, they go backwards, back to Perak Lamed Gimel, and they take two Prakhet, two Psukhem and Lamed Gimel that tell <coughs> us about the fact that there will be a time. The Yeshua, the Geula, there will be a time when we will get back. So Rosh Chodesh is on Shabbat? Rosh Chodesh is on Friday and Shabbat. It's a two day Rosh Chodesh. It is Adar Aleph. If it would be Adar Bet, we would have a different. Haftarah, we would not do the Haftarah of Rosh Chodesh, but we would do Shabbat Shkalim. Yes. And that was one time that I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> that I was talking about Haftarah, it was Shabbat Shkalim, on Shabbat Shkalim. And I had forgotten that it was Shabbat Shkalim, it was Rosh Chodesh, and I did the regular Haftarah, but we won't talk about that one. At any rate, Yeshayahu, this is Yeshayahu. And Yeshayahu, on Rosh Chodesh, what we usually do is we take the very last parrot of Yeshayahu. And it's really interesting because Yeshayahu is, I don't know if you ever noticed, it's the biggest, <laughs> the heaviest of all of the Nevi'im. Yeshayahu is 66 prokim. The next big one is like 40-something. Sixty-six prakim. It is the very, very last parak, Samach Vav. And the interesting thing is that Ishayahu is very organized, and he starts talking about Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh, and he ends talking about Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh. In Parak Aleph, 
Perak Aleph Yeshayahu introduces what's going on in the world around him. What is going on in the 8th century before the Common Era, in the city of Yerushalayim, what are the people doing? And he is quite harsh. He is quite harsh. He speaks in the name of Hashem, and basically he says, I hate it. Really, in those words, I hate it. I'll give you an exact quote from Perak Aleph in Yeshayahu. He says, Lama li rov zivchechem. This is our Kaddish Baruch who is speaking, the Navi is speaking. He says, why do I need all of your sacrifices? <coughs> They're meaningless because there's nothing behind them. The idea of doing kar- karbanot is really to affect the person. It's not the karban itself. Yomar Hashem. And he literally says what I told you before. Savati olote lim, I am filled. I am filled with the burnt sacrifices of rams, v'chelev muriyim, and the fattened sheep. V'dam parimu kvasim v'atudim lo chafatstin. I don't want you to sprinkle the blood of all. I don't want you. I don't want it. Ki tavou lerot panai. When you come to see my face, when you come into the Beit HaMikdash, me be keshot me etchem. Who asked you to do this? Who asked you to bring this? Ramos chatzerai. Trampling. Trampling into my courtyard. You can always get a picture because his language is so very descriptive. Okay, I just don't want to say that uh, what you've been saying, that this is Chazon Yishayon, which is Shabbat's Chazon. So yeah. it's a very, very this strong. Very strong. We read it. Thank you, Brenda. I should have mentioned. I really appreciate it. We read Chazon Yishayon Ben Amot. It's the first parak. I left out the first pasuk. We read that on Shabbat Chazon, which is the Shabbat before... Tisha B'Av. So yes, it's very strong. The language is very strong. And he says, Loto Sifu, Hevi Minchat Shav. Don't, don't continue. Don't bring this meaningless uh, meal offering to me. Don't continue to do this. Ketore To'eva. That's really strong. It is disgusting. <laughs> Incense to me. Toeva, the lowest, right? Here it goes. Chodesh v'shabbat kro mikra. You come. You call an assembly. You come to the Beit HaMikdash. You all get together. You call us to get together on Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh. Lo uchal oven v'atzara. Lo uchal. I can't take it. I can't stand the combination of Avel, evil doing, and Atzara and Yantif. You come together to celebrate when you're doing evil. And here, Chadshechem Umoadechem Son Anafshi. It is very strong. You are Rosh Chodesh and you are Yom Tovim. My soul hates Son Such strong words. Hayu Alayla Torah. They were a pain to me. They were just a pain in the neck. I, it, it, I didn't enjoy it at all. Nilating me so. I am tired of tolerating it. In the last parak, in our Haftorah, he berates the people again in a bone-chilling manner for their continued behavior, but then ends with a magnificent, glowing description of what Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh will be in the time of the Gula. <coughs> in fact, it's the next to last Pasuk, but it's one of the times, you know them, I'll remind you of it, I know, one of the times that we repeat the next to last Pasuk, you get to the end, and then you repeat the next to last Pasuk, because the next last Pasuk is an up, upper, and we always end with an upper, like Megillat Eicha, we present Hashiveinu, Hashem Lekeinu, Benashuva. And here it is the, I'm not going to tell it to you. Well, when we get to it, we'll tell it. It is this beautiful description of Chodesh, Roshay Chodeshem, and Shabbatot. So, what's going on? 
What is going on in Perak Samach Vav of Yeshayahu that we will be reading as the Haftorah of the Shabbat? And we read several times during the year whenever Rosh Chodesh comes out on Shabbat and it's not Shabbat Shkalem as well or whatever. Uh, there, was, there are certain times that uh, you certain things come first. There's a preference, like if it's Rosh Chodesh, you don't read the Haftorah of Rosh Chodesh, even though it's a special Haftorah, but you would go to Shabbat Shkalem if it's Shabbat Shkalem. At any rate, Koa Marashem. I am in Perak Samach Vav, in Yeshayahu. Kol Amar Hashem, so says Hashem, Hashemayim kisi v'ha'aretz hadom ragai. The heavens are my throne. It's my seat. Remember last week, if you were here, we talked about whenever it says HaKadosh Baruch Hu sitting on his throne, it's the idea of his conducting the world in his normal fashion. In other words, everything's going on correctly in the world. So Hashemayim Kisi, when I am conducting the world, normally everything is doing well, then the heavens are my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Hadom Raglai is my footstool. Eze bayit asher tivnuli. What kind of house can you possibly build for me? The Eze Makom and what kind of physical thing could be a place of my rest? In other words, the whole world is me. I fill the world. Malay kol ha'aretz kavodo. How could you possibly think that I can be mitzumtzam, that I can be somehow placed within a structure? The et kol ele yodi asata. And everything in the world, my hand did, by Yehiyu Kolele, and they were. And as I just said, Baruch She'amar Vahaya. Ha'ulam we say every morning, right? We bless HaKadosh Baruch who just said, Yehi, right? Yehiyor. Vayehiyor. So all these, my hand did, and it just came about. It just was there. The Elzeabit. But nevertheless, despite the fact that I am all over the entire world, that the whole heavens and the earth is mine, that I made everything, I still pay attention to individuals. This is what I look at, El Oni, and Oni doesn't necessarily mean a poverty-stricken person, but it means a humble, a humble person, somebody who is like, uh, who is not arrogant, is an ane, unachei ruach, of lowly spirit, v'chared al dvarai. And somebody who is very careful, chared, he trembles, he trembles, charedi, right, v'chared al dvarai. So I look at a person who is of lowly spirit, who is really careful, and who trembles to follow my word. As opposed to Shochet Hashor, somebody who comes and brings a karban and he slaughters an ox, Makeish, but he's just killed somebody or struck some man. He has done something wrong. So I look at the lowly person and I pay attention to what he's doing if he is obeying my word. But then there are all these people that are coming into the Beit HaMikdash just like the first parak that we were speaking about a few minutes ago, Zovea Chaseh, and that person who was sacrificing a sheep, O Reif Kelef, he might as well be breaking the back of the neck of a dog. That's how much it means to me, Male Mencha Dam Chazir. He is bringing a Yemencha, a meal offering, and it's as, to me as though he is bringing the blood of a Chazir of a pig, maskir levona mevarech aven, and the person who is bringing levona frankincense is at the same time blessing the evil that he has been doing or that's going around. Around. Gam heima bacharu v'darkehemu v'shikut sehem nafsham chafetzah. They chose their ways 
They decided to do what they do and what their soul desires, what they want is their shikutsim, their abominations, their disgusting actions, simply their avodas around. Because what they were doing is the idea of the people in the type of time, 8th century before the common era, the people at the time of Yeshayahu were very into the idol worship that was going around it the world around them. Everybody was doing idol worship. We have no concept of why it was so attractive to these people. Why was it so attractive to our ancestors? We can't imagine. We can't. We have no concept. But they were very much attracted to all of the abominations, everything that was surrounding them. But they came to the Beit HaMikdash. They brought their korbanot because that was part of what everybody did. It was the celebration. It was the panoply. It was everything. It was beautiful. So they came. But it meant nothing to them. I will also, in other words, I am going to, I am going to punish them. Mida, connected mida. What they chose to do, I in turn will punish them in like fashion. I will choose their actions. and all of the things that they had done, that which they fear, I will bring. Ya an karati ve'ain one. Because I called and there was no answer. Dibarti velo shameo. I spoke and they did not hear. Vayasu harab enai. And they did that which was evil in my eyes. Uva sherlo chafatsti bacharam. And they chose to do that which I did not wish them to do. And here, there's, though Yeshayahu is speaking in the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in the name of Hashem, he is also speaking in his own name. Because the largest, huge problem that Yeshayahu had was that he was given the gift of magnificent speech and nobody listened. Nobody listened. And so you hear it. You hear it sometimes in his language. He's saying in the name of Hashem, nobody's listening. But you know that is coming from him as well. There is something within him. There's one parak where he really says, Hashem natanli l'shon limudim. Hashem gave me an educated tongue. It's not only the gift of gab that he had, but it was educated he was an extremely highly educated person. He spoke beautifully. I wish I could give it over properly. He spoke beautifully and nobody was listening. Now maybe I'm exaggerating. There were a few people here and there that were listening, but he didn't really make it. He wasn't much peer. He didn't really have an effect. And why is that? On his generation. <laughs> It's really, why is that is a good question? You could even you put it a little bit different. That. You can say that back to that as well. We don't have no meaning, but we have Chachamim and we have Rabanim. And nobody consults them. That was, that was a good answer. That. You can say our Buddhas are about today as well. We even have. Even there isn't our data thing, it's our Buddhas are up. We have it all around us. The human being, I, I, when, when Marcel speaks, I should not say anything. <laughs> because it's true, we have it all around us today. We have Talmudic Chachamim, we don't have Nevi'im. We have people who speak magnificently, who are great teachers. And there's a lot of people who are not listening. It's the nature of the human being. At the time, if we think of the time, at the time, it was Avodah Zarah. We have Avodah Zarah today. It's a different type that people listen to. And there's temptation. Ay, it's hard. But however, 
I'm up to person. Yes. I think one of the things I think the finale was the Navia of the King. And the king didn't listen to him. Yeshayahu was um, one of the interesting things to think about altogether, Marcia. I'm glad you brought that up. Was the king versus the navi yeah. in all of the era, all of the era of the first Beit Hamikdash, because the king versus the navi is always very interesting to see. The kings were not listening, even the Melech Tzadik of the time of Yeshayahu, Chizkiyahu, who is the Melech Tzadik, mm-hmm. and whom the Navi um, of Melachem and Jibre Hayamem describe Chizkiyahu as a Melech Tzadik, like David, his father, that's the way he's described, and even he did not always listen to Yeshayahu. Even he, and certainly not Achaz, and... So it, it was uh, it was a little difficult. At any rate, here it's okay. Shemu Dvar Hashem. He's calling. He's calling to the people. Listen to the word of Hashem. Hacharedim el Dvaro. In case you thought Hacharedim was a modern expression, you can find it all over. Listen to the word of Hashem. Those who are hare tremble. Those who tremble to hear is. Word, imru achechem sonechem menadechem. Don't listen to the words of your brothers who are really acting. They uh, pretend to be your brothers that they care for you, but they are really sonechem. They're really your enemies. Menadechem, they're the ones that push you away from the correct path. Lema an shmi yechbad Hashem. So listen to me, those who really still remember and who tremble. Don't listen to your brothers. We will get to a place of happiness and they, yevoshum, they will be embarrassed. They will be ashamed at the end. Kol sha'on me'ir. Listen to his language. He says, I hear noise. I hear noise coming from the city. Kol mehechal. I hear a voice coming from the sanctuary, from the Beit HaMikdash. Kol Hashem Mishalem Gemul Oivav. You know what the voice I hear is? You know what the sounds I hear coming from the city, coming from the Beit HaMikdash, coming from all of the holy places, it's the sound of Hashem, because Hashem knows what's going on, and He is Kiviyachol, preparing to bring about the Geula, which will be the good time for those Tzadikim who listen to His voice, and the punishment, Lo Aleinu, for those people who didn't. Because He does a Mashal. He gives us a parable. His language is always parable mixed with fine language. That's why sometimes it's a little difficult to understand. But if you just think, then you get it very quickly. He says, This is the voice that's coming from the city. The voice that's coming from the city is saying, before... She's going to even have any labor pains. She's going to give birth. The city very often is compared to a woman. The city of Yerushalayim very often in the language of Yeshayahu who uses these parables. The parable of a woman giving birth. A woman goes through labor pains before she can have a baby but she knows that there's a good reason for those labor pains. The labor pains are making it possible for her to actually have that baby. The city is going to come to life. It's going to begin coming to life before she even begins having the labor pains. This really scares me, I have to tell you. 
because it's talking about the time of Yeshua. And when the Nevi'im talk about the time of Yeshua, we need to be thinking about today. We need to be thinking, how does it fit in with our language today, with our life, Slicha, with our life today? Because look what it's talking about. There will be some people coming back to Yerushalayim. After Yerushalayim will be left desolate. We'll get to that. Will be left desolate because the people will be sent out into exile, into Galut. The Navi is saying, this is the way the Yeshua is going to begin. People are going to start coming back to Yerushalayim. I'm sorry that I always have to walk around to see you. I like to see everybody's face. Thank you. I'm sorry to make you get up. But I like to have eye contact. Thank you. People will come back to Yerushalayim um, before anything starts. And what do you think the labor pains are? The persecution of other countries. Excuse me? The persecution in Chutzpahs. The persecution, not just in Chutzpahs, but we're going to be talking about Milchamot, Gog, Umagot, here. That's why I get scared. I really get scared. I'm getting goosebumps now. Here. Here they're going to be, thank you for moving. Here they're going to be. So in other words, before the actual labor pain starts, people will start coming back. But Cherem Yavo, Hevela, Vihimlita Zachar. Even before she has the first labor pain, she is going to bring out a male child. That's the voice coming from the Hechal, from the sanctuary. Individual people will come back to Yushalayim and begin settling even before anything really happens that will bring on the Gu'ula, by which he is going to refer to the terrible battles that we say will happen at the end of time before the Gu'ula, unless we deserve it, in which case it will be modified. And he says, Misha Makazot, who ever heard anything like this? Mira Akaela, who has seen things like this? Hayuchal Eretz Biyomachad? Can an earth, can a land rebuild itself in one day, Yuchal, like having the baby, Chala, having the labor pain? Can, can it happen like that? Can you rebuild a nation seemingly in one day? Sorry. Kim ye vole goi pamachat? Can an entire nation be rebuilt, be reborn? Ye vole, be reborn at one time? Ki chala gam yolda tsion et vana. Because tsion. The Holy Spirit of Yerushalayim will go through the labor pangs and will give birth to her children. In other words, the Geula is going to be like a birth. It's going to be like a birth, but it will be a little bit not uh, the, the way a birth usually happens because it'll be little by little. There will be children born even before the terrible labor pains. It will be, there will be children and then it will be more and more and more and the labor pains will come as well. Ha'ani ashpir velo olid, Yeshayahu who says in the name of Hashem, do you think that I will bring the woman to the birthing stool, the mashbeer, and then I won't give birth? In other words, if I say this is going to happen, it's going to happen. Am I going to bring the birth process to that moment of crisis, the transition, and not give birth? Yomar Hashem, says Hashem. If I'm the one who's bringing about the birth, will I stop it? Says Hashem, no. Once the birth process starts, 
it will continue halavai that we're in that stage right now. And then what I consider one of the most beautiful psukim in all the VM, simchu at Yerushalayim, v'gilu ba kol ohaveha, when all the children will come back to Yerushalayim, when all Ami Yisrael will be <coughs> gathered to Yerushalayim again, make her happy, simchu, cause her, bring her happiness, sisu, the giluba, rejoice with her, call ohaveha, all who love her, sisu itam masot, rejoice, celebrate, Call Hamit Ablim Aleha, all those who in the past mourned for Yerushalayim. And the Malbim has a thing about these different words for happiness that I always quote. He says, Yeshadil, there's a difference between Simcha, Gila, and Sasam. Simcha, Gila, and Sasam. I learned this. Sasam. 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 I learned this because I have a granddaughter whose name is Gili. And so for her bat mitzvah, we looked at the psukim that use the word gil. And every time the Malbim tells us, yesh hevdel, simcha, when you use the term simcha, it means a state of general satisfaction. Simcha is where you feel you have reached a certain point. You are satisfied with what you have done. That's simcha. Gila is where something has happened that's exciting. Something has happened right now, this minute, it's exciting, and you're reacting to it. So simcha is where you're satisfied with it, like an ongoing thing, and gila is wow. That's gila. Gila is wow. There's really something going on. Sason is the way you show your happiness. You know how you show your happiness? When you go to a wedding, don't you want to put on your best dress? Right? I'm not going to go out of my house without putting on some makeup. You have, can't scare people in the streets. <laughs> so you have to, you have to, you dress up. You outwardly show your happiness. That's Sasson. Sasson is also at a chasana. What do you do to be Mesameach? Hatan Bakala. You dance. You, right? You sing. You dance. You eat a good meal. All those outer things. That's Sasson. There's also Aliza. In other words, there are other words for Simcha, for different kinds of joy as well. But the Malbim concentrates always when there's Simcha, when there's Gila. The Malbim, by the way, is a wonderful Perush and Navi, end of 18th, beginning of 19th century, uh, that you can't learn Navi without. So you have to have a safer there. At any rate, so rejoice with Yerushalayim and cause the city to rejoice even more. Make them happy. Lema'antinku usvatem mishod tanfumeha. I want you to notice how he keeps using the mashal, the parable, and like drain, it's the only word I can think is the Yiddish. He kind of like, he takes a parable and he gets everything he can out of it. He says, rejoice with Yerushalayim so that you will be able to suckle from the breast of her tanhumim, of her consolation. In other words, if you rejoice with Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim will rejoice with you and will bring you pleasure and will nurse you, will give you sustenance so that you will be able to tinkumi show, you will be able to nurse from the breast of her tanhumim, of her consolation. Lama'an tamotu, so that you'll actually like take the last drop. <coughs> you'll want to keep nursing till you get the last drop. The hit anaktem mi ziz And ziz is like that last sweet, 
honey flavored drop of the milk. In other words, as long as you are happy, Yerushalayim will respond, will give you the Tanchumim, will nurture you, will give you what you give you your sustenance, will sustain you. And meanwhile, you will be hit an actem. It's with oneg, it's with joy that you will experience okay, your so time. It's probably, it's probably, I can't think of it right now, Marcel. What Marcel is saying, Marcel speaks very quietly, but it's very important to hear what she says. So she's saying that there is in one of the Zemiro Chavat where we have Kedushat Hazman and Kedushat HaMakom coming together on Shabbat in Yerushalayim, that we have the Zuchot. We have the Zuchot of having of Baruch Hashem every week and it is part of these Mirot of Shabbat. Another absolutely beautiful Pasuk, Ki Koamar Hashem, because this is what Hashem is saying, there's more that's going to happen in the time of the Ge'ulah. Hinini noteh al eleha k'nahar shalom. I am going to turn to her, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is saying, I'm going to turn all the nations, the other nations, I'm going to turn towards Yerushalayim, not the way they look today, not the way the UN looks at us today as if we're some kind of rebel, rogue state that does horrendous things, but I'm going to turn all of the nations towards Yerushalayim Kinahar Shalom, like a river of peace. They are going to come to Yerushalayim like a river of peace. Ukenachal shotef kavod goyim. And like a nachal, a river that's flowing, a flowing quick, it's not just slow water, it's going to flow quickly of the glory of all the nations. They are going to come and visit Yerushalayim. And you'll also suckle from that which the nations will bring you. You will have that as well, and you will be carried around. In other words, like, you know, you take a baby and you just want to carry a baby around. They'll carry you around because you will be precious to all of the nations at that time. And they'll shake you on their, on their knees. They'll, they'll, you know, like, hug you and, and, and shake you on their knees. I can imagine that today. Yeah. <laughs> what is going to happen? It's really something to imagine, Tomorrow. isn't that? Tomorrow. Imagine. I could just imagine. Keisha Sher E. Motanachamanu. Like a man whose mother comforts him. Kena Nochi Anachemchem. So will I comfort you. Uvi Rushalayim Tanachem. And where will you be comforted in this manner that I am describing? Because you will be here in Yerushalayim. Uri'item, it's one pasuk after another, my friends. Uri'item, you will see this, v'sas, v'sas libchem. Your heart will rejoice, it will be seen outwardly. Remember, sason is the outward display of joy. And your very bones will blossom like grass that comes all over. That's all over. You know, in other words, grass that grows very quickly. You will feel your bones coming to life. Like deshe covers the ground. You know, like after a rain, when it looks so green, you will have that rebirth. You will feel it in your bones. And the hand of Hashem will be known to his servants, how he has acted to those who were loyal. And there will be anger to his enemies. And now just a few psukim about the anger to the enemies. Hashem is going to come like a fire, in a fire. Ukasufa Markovotav and the wheels of his chariots will be like a storm going very, very quickly. 
picking up dust. Hashem moving, not just sitting, not conducting the world, but moving. To return with anger, the anger that he has at the people. And his anger will be like flames of fire. Hashem is going to judge with fire, and fire, you know, is anger. Fire is strong anger. And there will be many, many that will be slain by that anger of Hashem at that time. Who? Hamit Kachim, the Hamit Harim El Haganot. Those people that thought that they were being holy and that they were purifying themselves by going out in the gardens, and the gardens were where they had all the idols for Avodah Zarah. So they thought that they were being pure, mit kachim, they're sanctifying themselves. How? By going to the idols. Achar, achat, batavach, ochle busar, chazir, one after another, going to the centers where they had all those idols. They ate the Flesh of a chazir, v'hasheket, v'ha'achbar, rats, and disgusting things. In other words, they did disgusting things. It doesn't mean they literally ate rats. It means that that which they did, the avodas or rather they did, was filled with abominations. It was filled with all kinds of sexual uh, aberrations, their, uh, their avodas or rat. It was horrendous. It was really abomination. Yachad Yosufu Hashem. They'll all be finished together. In other words, they will be ended. That will be their punishment. V'anochi ma'aseihem u'machshibotechem ba'av l'kabes et kol goyim v'halishonot u'va'u v'ra'u et kvodi. And I have taken hold of the thoughts, the ideas, of everybody, of the nations, and I'm going to bring them, I'm going to gather them, and bring them, all of the Goyim, all of the nations, and the languages, to come and see my glory. Run on sentence. I didn't know where to stop, but what he's saying, uh, the people that will come to Yerushalayim from the nations, I'm going to put a sign on them. They will be changed. They're not going to leave Yerushalayim in the same condition that they came. They will be changed. And they are going to go back to wherever they came from all over the world. And they will repeat and tell everybody in those far off places. Tuval and Yavan, Greece, Ha'iyim, the islands are Hokim, the far islands that didn't even never heard about me. They didn't hear my name, did not see my glory, and they will relate my glory among all the nations that they come back to. Talking now about kibbutz goliot. They will bring your brothers that were scattered all over the world from all of the nations as a gift to Hashem. In other words, I'm going to bring the nations here, including those that come to fight originally. And I will put my mark on them. They will be forever changed. They will not be the same. They will go back to their nations. They will really bring the message of HaKadosh Baruch to all of the other nations. And they will then gather all of the Jews. And we're talking essentially about the Ten Lost Tribes here. We're talking about the Aseret Shvatim that we are just beginning to hear about in our day. And they will bring them all back 
They will bring them as a gift to Hashem basusim on horses, ubarechem, <coughs> chariots, ubatzabim, ubapradim, riding on individual horses, ubakirkarot, and on wagons. <coughs> Excuse me. Al har kachi Yerushalayim, Amar Hashem. They will bring them all to my holy mountain. In Yerushalayim, Hashem says, Kasher yaviyu b'nei Yisrael et ha-mincha v'kli tahor. They'll bring the Jews the way a Jew comes to the Beit HaMikdash and he brings the fine flour to give as a karban in a pure vessel. In other words, they'll bring them as something precious, as something holy, as something extremely important when they bring your brothers back that have been lost all over the world. And when these people who have been lost for so many centuries come back, if there are among them Kohanim and Levim, <coughs> they will be returned to their place because they were forced all those years not to be here. And yes, I know that people want to come in. It's early though. Still my time. <laughs> but we are finishing. Ki kasher hashamayim hachadashim v'ha'aretz hachadasha asher ani oseh omdim lefanai v'omashem. The Navi is saying, if you don't believe me, Hashem says that I see exactly what the world will be like at that time. <laughs> and those renewed heavens and the renewed earth, I see it before my eyes as though it's happening right now. These are the words of Hashem. Ken yamod zarachem the shimchem. So your children will surely be there, stand up at that time, and your name. In other words, just like I can see it all now, it is true. It will happen because I see HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that it exists. Your children will remain in your name. Remember that old promise, but that promise that is constantly renewed to us, that we are an eternal nation. We are eternal. The heavens are eternal. The earth is eternal. You Am Yisrael are eternal. And here we go with the month and Shabbat connection. Next to last Pasuk that is repeated. Vahaya mi de chodesh v'chadshav and it will be on each month on the Rosh Chodesh on the first day of the month umi de Shabbat the Shabbato, and on every Shabbat as it falls on its day, Yavo Kobasar. All flesh will come, Yavo Kobasar the Hishtachavot Lufanai, to bow down before me, Amar Hashem. On Rosh Chodesh, on Shabbat, all nations will come to the Beit HaMikdash. The Beit HaMikdash will welcome just like Shlomo said in his original Tzvilah when he built the first Beit HaMikdash, he said, Ki beiti beit tefillah ha'amim. Because my house will be called the place of worship for all the nations. So you know what will happen at the end of days? The nations will come on Rosh Chodesh and on Shabbat. The last Pasuk the Yatsuva Ra'uba Pigreha and Ashim Haposhaim. There's always that idea that evil will be punished. There is always that idea throughout the Nivim that it's not it's not it's a negative idea, but we have to remember that evil will be punished. So they will go out, they'll come to will come to the Beit HaMikdash and they will see the bodies of those who were the sinners who refused to listen and did not do tshuva. 
they will be burning those bodies and they will be filled with worms. It's the idea of eternal punishment. It is a picture of <coughs> evil will be punished. True evil that we unfortunately have seen with our own eyes in our day it will be punished with eternal punishment that will never, never stop. And they will chill the bones of all flesh. And then you can always see at the bottom, because we never end, never end on a negative note. It will be on every Rosh Chodesh on the day of Rosh Chodesh in Midei Shabbat B'Shabbatah. And on the Shabbat, Yavo Kol Basar V'Shtavavot Ufanam, Amar Hashem. All flesh, all human beings will come to the Beit HaMikdash to bow down before me, says Hashem. So that's quite a message. Can I ask just quickly... In most of the pieces they were discussing, it was very much emphasized about everything happening in Yerushalayim. What happens to the rest of the Kedusha Ta'aretz of, of the whole country? Is it a metaphor? for? It is a country? metaphor. That's a good question. I'm glad you brought it up. Did you all hear the question? Uh, it always mentions Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim is the center but yes, it is a metaphor. It is actually a metaphor for the world. It's a metaphor for the whole world at the time of Gu'ula. It is everything. In other words, Yerushalayim is the center. It is really the middle. It's where everything happens. From Yerushalayim, everything comes out. Remember, at the very beginning, Parak Bet and Bereshit, when we had a description of Gan Eden, and there were four rivers that came out of Gan Eden. And essentially it's the idea that from this center that was Gan Eden, all the good, all HaKadosh Baruch Hu's good, the Shefa of HaKadosh Baruch Hu will then go, the, the culture, the beliefs, everything comes out of Gan Eden and nourishes the entire world. So when we talk about Yerushalayim, it is the center and the entire world, not just on Eretz Yisrael, but the entire world is nourished from that center of Yerushalayim. The rivers go out. Yechezkel tells us a river will go out from under the door of the Beit HaMikdash. A river will go out from under the door and it will go underground, break off into different pieces and nourish the entire world.